Don't ever be afraid to mix it up, even when something is working. Being successful at bass fishing is mostly a byproduct of what's known as time on water, meaning the more time you spend bass fishing, the more knowledge you will gain, and then applying that knowledge leads to consistent success. You want to study, learn, mimic, and apply. When it all comes together, even just once, you walk away not only with a photo of a big fish, but the satisfaction of knowing that you're progressing as an angler. This outing was kind of a watershed moment for me in that regard for my kayak bass fishing June tournament. It was the day before the online tournament closed. Now, if you're not familiar with the KBF monthly state challenges, they run from the 1st through the 21st of each month. And I was sitting in seventh place and I knew that I needed some big fish to move up the board. My goal for June was to beat my total five fish length of 81 and a quarter inches I put on the board in May. I needed a couple of big fish to make that happen. I headed back to some familiar ponds I've been fishing quite a bit of late and have started to decipher. I know where the deep water lies, where the structure lies in that deep water, which lay down whole fish, where the ledges are, and where there's shallow grass. I began with my old faithful, my black and blue laminate five inch Senko rig wacky. The first few fish were quality, but not the big ones I needed for the day. and a thunderstorm had just rolled through prior to putting my kayak in the water. And this is an absolutely great time to fish. Here's what happens. The rain adds oxygen to the water, cools the surface water down, and the runoff draining into the pond reinforces both of those things for a time. Combine that with the fact that this was an afternoon storm headed right into the evening feeding window, and you've got a great opportunity for fish. And that weren't performed well, but I kept my eyes on the shallower grass beds. And I witnessed several pickerel swirling baits over the grass. You've heard me say it before. Pickerel give it all away. I knew if there were pickerel there, bass would be there as well. I also knew that if the fish were taking a more aggressive feeding posture, I could switch my bait choice away from a slower to fish plastic worm to a bait that would allow me to cover more water quicker. Enter the spinner bait, the classic searcher bait. It's also the perfect bait to throw into shallower water covering weed beds. It's somewhat naturally weed resistant, and if you have a few chunks of grass popping up to the surface, the blade will move right through them without really collecting too much weed. Almost immediately after the switch, I hooked up with a nice pickerel, a fish that I believe I've caught maybe four times in the last few months. He's got this particular loose jaw from repeated hook penetrations. Uh, suffice it to say, he's not a very smart fish. But the big fish for this outing was a 20 inch beast that fell victim to the enticement of the spinnerbait. He or she was sitting close to a lay down in about a foot of water in a pocket between the bank and the grass. Out of the fish jumped on that spinnerbait as soon as I began the retrieve. And my boat was sitting over deeper water, some of the deepest water in the pond. And that fish made a beeline, desperation swim for home under the boat. I gently helped it reverse course and come around to the front of the boat and let him right back into the net. Holy cow. 
once in the boat, took a few big deep breaths, focused on getting the best quality photo I could, making sure the mouth was closed, the nose was tight to the bump board, and all the required elements were visible in the photo. Now, I was also really careful to keep my finger away from that gill plate. You learn all of these things by making mistakes on smaller fish, and I've made quite a few. You just want to make sure you're not making those mistakes on the bigger fish. I always like to end an outing on a high note and I almost called it for the day as the evening was starting to slip away and I had a long drive home. One more run down the deep bank as it intersected with a shallow weed line and then I could call it quits. Now that proved to be a pretty wise choice as not many casts later another fat fish inhaled my spinnerbait. Not as big as the first but this bass came in at 18 and 3 quarter inches. Once again, focus on the requirements, don't get lost in the moment get the pick and get the fish back quickly into the water to catch and measure again next month and hopefully maybe grow a few more inches for next season. Pretty sure I was only on the water for around two and a half hours. Seriously though, I have had eight and ten hour days trying to score fish of this quality <laughs> unsuccessfully, I might add. My typical fishing adventure is about four to five hours on the water, so you can see this was a short one, but man, it was super productive to say the least. I was able to move up a few slots in the tournament and ended up finishing June in fourth place, otherwise known as first place loser since the top three all cash out. Hey, thanks everybody for watching the video. If it's your first time here on the channel, stick around and watch another video or two. And if you decide it's something you like, please consider clicking that subscribe button and tapping that bell icon to get notified when we drop a new video. You can also find me on other social channels as well on Instagram at Chesapeake Angler or my account at BN Rains on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash angler magazine Chesapeake. Hey, you can also listen to the weekly fishing report podcast that we drop every Tuesday sharing reports from around Maryland. You can find that at MarylandFishingLine.com or anywhere you download your audio podcast. And you can read the e-magazine version of Chesapeake Angler at ChesapeakeAnglerMag.com. Until next time, y'all, thanks for watching again and tight lines.